Hi students, today I want to talk to you about the concept of energy pyramids. Um, so energy pyramids is actually how energy flows through a community. I want to start drawing this out for you. So if I have the base level of the pyramid here, on this level I'm going to have all of the producers like flowers and grasses and you know more flowers and shrubs so I'm gonna have a lot of organisms on this level that are what's called producers so I will write here producers okay on the next level the next level up from here is actually only one tenth the size of the level below it. So if I take this, this big rectangle here and I do a tenth of that, at the most it's gonna be, and I'm gonna kind of make it a little bit taller than it needs to be, but at most that's one tenth of the level below it. And on this level, you're gonna have herbivores, animals that eat um, plants. So for that level, I'm going to put um, a gopher and so these animals eat plants and so you can call those primary consumers or you could call them just herbivores. They are organisms that eat um, plants, okay? Then the next level of the energy pyramid is actually gonna only be one-tenth the size of this level. So I'm gonna draw that up a tenth and I'm gonna draw it a little taller than it needs to be just so we get out of the way here. But at most, that's probably even more than one tenth. And on that level, we have the secondary consumers. Um, so here I'm gonna put a gopher snake that eats the gophers, okay? And there's very few of them compared to how many um, consumers there are, like primary consumers. And so the next level is gonna be one tenth the width of that. So I'm just gonna do a straight line and I'm gonna do it up there to get it out of the way. And on that level, I'm going to put a red-tailed hawk that eats um, gopher snakes and the gopher snakes will eat the gophers and the gophers will eat um, plants. So this is the secondary consumers. And the top level is the tertiary consumers. And usually there's nothing that only eats red-tailed hawks because there's just not very much energy left higher up um, on this pyramid. So what does this all mean? Is the energy pyramid just a food web or is it more than that? Well, the energy pyramid is actually a lot more than just a food pyramid. The energy part of that, the energy part of that name refers to how much energy is in each individual level in this system. So I wanna put some numbers to this and give you some examples. If in the producer level, there is 100,000 kilocalories of energy, then the next level up, we said it's just a tenth of the size, so take a guess, what's one tenth of this? You would either multiply um, by 0.1, or you could divide it by 10, and you would get the next level. Okay, so the next one, if we divide this by 10, so that's the same thing as taking off a zero there, you're gonna have a one and four zeros. One, two, three, four, and you put in your comma, and you have 10,000 kilocalories on this level. And then you, on the next level, it's a tenth of the size, so you take off another zero, and we're down to 1,000 kilocalories. And then we move up one more level and we divide it by 10 and we're down to 100 kilocalories of energy is available to the top level in this. And of course, where does all this energy come from? All of this energy is originally coming 
from the sun, okay? The sun is feeding this whole thing. And if this has 100,000 kilocalories, then the, the energy of the sun above it is 10 times bigger. So what's 10 times bigger than 100,000? You would add one more zero. Let's see if you can get this. Instead of just five zeros, you would have six zeros. So one, one, two, three, four, five, six kilocalories of energy at a minimum came down from the sun to this little area here, this little ecosystem. So of course, the sun probably gave this area a lot more than that and just a lot of it gets lost. Well, how do scientists come up with these numbers? Scientists got these numbers by actually um, doing measurements at each level and they found that 90% of all energy average on average is lost at each level, 90% of all energy is lost at each level. And where is that energy going? That energy in something called cell respiration that you guys have learned before, that energy is just lost at each level as heat. So heat, energy is lost on each level and specifically, 90% of it, a great deal of it, actually gets lost at each level. So up the chain, only 10% of the energy survives. So what does that mean? It means that animals that are further down on the pyramid are actually making better use or being more efficient with the energy that's available. Meaning if, if you go out and eat a top predator, a red-tailed hawk, then you're using a lot of, you know, it took a lot of energy to make that one red-tailed hawk um, because of everything it had to eat down the line um, to make that red-tailed hawk. But if you go out and have a salad, then you're making more efficient use of, uh, you know, the available energy in the environment. Um, and so each of these animals are doing that as well. Because the animals higher up the chain are less efficient, there has to be less of them because there's just not as much energy available to them. Now, some of the questions, what does this mean when you see it on a test? Some of the questions will ask, how much energy is left? All of this is the energy left. This is all the energy that's left as you go up the pyramid. But some questions, so some questions will say, if you go from a producer to a consumer, how much energy is left? Well, the answer is 10,000 kilocalories is left. But some questions might flip that and they ask, well, how much energy got lost? In order to figure that out, you would subtract 100,000 minus 10,000 so you would do 100,000 minus 10,000 and you would get 90,000 kilocalories were lost. Were lost moving from this level to that level. So if they ask you how much energy is left, here's how much energy is left. If they ask you how much got lost altogether, this is how much got left over, they could save it how much got lost altogether, that's when you subtract these numbers, okay? So um, I wanted to show you a couple energy pyramids that I do not like. Um, the first one is this one. This is from Power School Learning. There's a couple reasons why I don't like it. First of all, most snakes don't just eat crickets. Um, most snakes don't even eat crickets. Um, the other thing that I don't like about this is that um, the section above is way more than one tenth of the size of this section. So it really looks more like a food, like pyramid, than it looks like an energy pyramid. 
Again, here's another one um, from Encyclopedia Britannica. I like this because it labeled um, each of the levels. It also shows energy being lost from some of these, but not this top level. Another thing I don't like about it is again, it, it's a traditional pyramid shape and it should be one tenth the size of the pyramid below it. It's just a visual thing to help you understand. And I think it makes it more complicated when they don't draw it like this and show that it's a pyramid, but it's a weird pyramid, almost like an, a temple rather than, you know, an ancient pyramid. Maybe you'd see like something like this shape and, you know, some uh, temples, um, but not, Pyramids, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't necessarily like the shape. Um, so that's energy pyramids. I wanted to go over that with you um, so that if you're testing on that soon or struggling with it in your book so that you have a better idea of how that works. Uh, take care and I hope you have a great week.